I shall now give the floor to Brazil. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and thank you very much, Dr. Tedros, for your presentation. Um, my question, which is based on your presentation this morning, uh, essentially, I would like to indicate that notwithstanding your claim to be a candidate from a developing country, in my view, you have seemed to espouse, to have espoused an agenda that is very much aligned with priorities of the North, such as approaching global health through a security lens, treating universality through a concept of coverage, not of a universal health system. You see the WHO as an implementer of international health regulation, not as a standard setting body. You focus on fragile states and hard to reach settings, but with very little clarity on the WHO mission in terms of the development agenda. So how can we um, translate your views in terms of a development candidate? Thank you. Sorry, but the question is not clear. Can you clarify, if may, I may ask? Sorry. How can you better explain your claim of being a candidate from the South, a, a development agenda candidate? When you say that candidate, <coughs> linking it with sustainable development goals? Well, I'm <laughs> the rules to have a dialogue, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can I possibly try and clarify the question? During your intervention this morning, you claimed to be a candidate coming from a developing countries. The plans you put forward in your uh, presentation, according to His Excellency, um, are more related to uh, a north part, a developed country type of driven uh, agenda. So how can you claim that you are coming from a developing country and yet presenting uh, a developed country agenda. Is that roughly what, uh, what the question is? Yes? Okay, thank you. That's, that's clear now. Sorry, I didn't want to answer without clarity. Uh, if you take the five priorities, as I said earlier, I have spoken to 182 countries, and universal health coverage crystallized actually as the most priority. And coming from a developing country, that's very important. And for the developed countries, that's very important. Universal health coverage in some developed countries is not achieved because, I said earlier, lack of political commitment. But I believe countries from the north or south, if they have strong political commitment, they can implement it. And I said universal health coverage or health for all as a rights issue. There is no divide between north and south. It's for everybody. And as a representative, I mean, as a candidate for WHO, not only will I serve Africa, but the rest of the world as well. And that's why I, I, I listened. And if you take the other, the emergency response, for instance, I put, when I put the three sticking issues, the concerns of the developing world and what the developed world should understand. No cherry picking of the implementation than solidarity of the North and South. That's very important. So emergency or global health security is important for all of us. Emergency or epidemics rages or affects developing countries more, but it also affects developed countries. And that's why I called for solidarity and also uh, country ownership, country capacity building, and so on. This is true for the South, this is true for the East, or the whole world. And women, children, especially adolescent, more marginalized, by the way, in developing world. And that's why in our, when we assessed our system in Ethiopia, we spoke to the women themselves. What's the problem? They were underutilizing the services. And the reason was cultural problems and house chores. And that's why the front line in our system, for instance, is you have a static service at Health Post, plus outreach because of to, to break the house chore barrier to visit families house to house to address it. And this, especially women, children, adolescents, could be very important for the South, but also for, for the North. So I can see the priorities are really uh, balanced. 
and this is after talking almost to all, uh, uh, many, almost all uh, countries, uh, and I believe it really strikes a balance, but not only that, from my own experience also. I worked in developing country, and also I led global institutions. I have understanding of the North and South. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tedros. Or to Estonia. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your introductory um, views. Um, yesterday, during the financing dialogue, we heard some fears that the WG technical cooperation might need to undergo some surgical cuts if we do not step up to commit ourselves to contribute in a more sustainable manner to the WHO budget. I would like to ask you, uh, which technical cooperation areas do you regard being the nice to have or so-called the pet topics of the member states in which the WHO is currently active and you see the least value added in the organization action? Thank you. Maybe if you can repeat, not uh, clear, or if you can... Yeah, yes. Can you quickly yes. repeat the question, uh, please? question is, uh, which technical cooperation areas of WHO do you regard being the nice to have or so-called the pet topics of the member states in which the WHO is currently active and you see the least value added in the organization's action? Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, by the way, WHO is now planning, as you know, bottom-up. And that's a very important planning approach. And the technical cooperation or technical assistance should be based on the country needs. So as long as countries say this is good for us, for instance, they are identifying now top 10, I think the, the importance of the technical cooperation should depend based on the country needs. As long as the country or region is happy with the technical cooperation it's getting, I think WHO will also be happy. So that's what should be the guiding principle. And that's why I was saying country ownership is key. Support based on country needs is key. Support based on country priorities is key. Empowering the country is key. And even with the structure I said, even empowering the regional offices is key. And based on that, we can provide the technical cooperation uh, they need. And as long as that's their priority and that's what they want, uh, that need-based support is very important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tedros. The time allowed for the questions and answers is now exhausted as is the total time for uh, the uh, interview. I wish to thank you, Dr. Adhanom Ghebreyesus, for being with us today.